All right, in this next video, we're gonna drink beer. And we're gonna talk about throwing parts at the problem and not fixing it. I've been guilty of it myself. Troubleshooting vacuum leaks, electrical problems, any stuff like that's pretty hard to figure out. But when you're troubleshooting something simple as an engine that's just stalling with no engine codes, and this is a fuel injected engine, you gotta fucking remember the term KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. I see people start throwing math sensors at it. I see people start throwing idle control valves on it. And that shit still isn't fixing the problem. You just gotta remember, your vehicle needs three things to operate. Fuel, air, and ignition. If your vehicle's stalling, and you don't know why, Check A, your fuel pressure, or your throttle body and see if it's dirty. Check the throttle body first, because if your throttle body's dirty, your throttle body has a throttle position sensor, and your throttle body, depending if it's drive by wire or cable connected, will be open a slight bit at idle, and that allows air in for it to operate. Now, if your throttle body is dirty, you may not be getting the proper amount of air in, so that when the engine's at idle, it'll stall. Secondly, if your fuel pump is going or your fuel filter is plugged, your vehicle can stall as well. And you won't get an engine code if your fuel pump is fucking going or your fuel filter is plugged. The only thing you might get out of it is a lean fuel code. That is very possible. I've seen it before. But if it's something that just started, no engine codes and just randomly out of stop signs and stalls, check the simple things first. Fuel pressure, throttle body, fuel filter see if it's plugged so in this video we're going to check the fuel pressure on the jeep there's nothing wrong with my jeep but i keep seeing this on videos so i'm going to give you guys this as pointers on what to do so now what we're going to do now is turn the key on and the fuel pump should run for a few seconds to give us a base pressure Alright, so you can see right now my fuel pressure is at 45 PSI and it's pressurized up. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start the Jeep and I'm going to zoom in on the, uh, the gauge there. And the gauge should stay right around here. Now if this gauge starts bouncing up and down, the fuel pressure regulator could be shot. And um, that could leave you with a big issue as well with not getting the proper amount of fuel. So we're going to fire it up. And the fuel pressure should stay roughly within that when the engine's running. So we know fuel pressure's good. And now we're going to let the vehicle sit. We're going to do a fuel injector leak down test on because after about 5-10 minutes or one beer, Depending on how much the fuel pressure has bled off will determine if you have leaky fuel injectors or not. So right now we're at about 46 PSI and we're going to wait 10 minutes and come back. Alright, it's been about 10 minutes and uh, you can see right there I might have leaked down maybe 1 PSI, if that. So we know the injectors are good, we're not leaking anything through the injectors. The regulator's doing what it's supposed to because the fuel pressure's staying constant, not being over-pressurized or under-pressurized. So we know the fuel system's good, and the Jeep TJ doesn't have a fuel filter either, so... If you're having problems with stalling, you can rule out the fuel system by doing these simple tests. Alright, if you want to go deeper in depth, you can look at the throttle body. And the throttle body on the Jeep, you can see my throttle body's clean, so I wouldn't be having any problems with restricted airflow with it being dirty. Alright, so that's just a simple video. Uh, as far as going into troubleshooting the no spark condition, that's a whole different story in itself, especially on the Jeep TJ with the distributorless ignition. 
Uh, if you guys are interested, I'll do a video on that and how to test it. But I just want to keep the video simple. And if I start doing that, it's going to get a whole new world of shit. And I fucking don't want to make the video like 20 minutes long. Like I said, um, anytime you're having problems with a fuel-injected vehicle, if a sensor is giving you issues, it'll most likely give you a code. Things like a MAF sensor may not give you code because over time the sensor will get dirty and it'll cause your engine to give you a mess reading and make it run leaner richer but you can do a simple test like that if you're having problems with your vehicle running if you pull out the fucking plug to the MAF sensor your ECU will go to a pre-programmed state allow the vehicle to run and if your vehicle runs better with it unplugged there's a pretty good chance that that sensor's hooped Anyways, I'm going to leave the video at that. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, post them below. And if you like any more videos that you'd like to see done or understand, just leave a message below and I'll do my best to get that done for you.